Wonderful. Welcome back to episode 47 of the Epic... No, wait, hold on. New podcast. Welcome back to episode 2 or 47 of the Rat City Radio Podcast. With me, as always, is my co-host, Dredd. Thank you so much for being here. And this Hello. is... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just so excited. I'm going to cut you off immediately. We are, we are a brand new podcast. We are brand new theming, brand new uh, logo and everything. And with that, we've even got a very special guest here 24 hours before the launch of the 1.1 patch. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Hello. Uh, Thanks for having me. I appreciate you taking your time of your very uh, very busy day to chat with us about what's going to be going on tomorrow with the launch of the Harbinger patch for uh, for Last Epoch. Oh, I'm so excited. This, this is such a weird occasion because, like, so I've been I've been making content for Last Epoch for like like you know, on YouTube for like the past like four to five years now, and I feel like I know you, but like in like a in a weird parasocial way if that makes sense because like i've talked with you at length a lot now over the past four years but this is actually the first time we've actually direct one-to-one had a conversation so it's very interesting really yeah i I, I would have i would have just assumed we've done this before at some point so sorry it took so long no, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just one of probably one of the annoying people that makes questions and, and that makes you have to go check things. And they you ask don't the need to question. humble yourself. Listen, you have the last epoch swag. You have the last epoch pop filter. Like, yeah, you're fine. I, you're fully branded. I, that nice. I, I had to, uh, I did sadly sacrifice one of the socks, but <laughs> it's cool. It looks great. So we have, we have a list of all kinds of questions that we would like to bombard you with today regarding the upcoming patch. Things about your opinions on the state of the game, things that you're excited about, how your Serpent build, Serpent Strike build is going to look for 1.1, because apparently I'm also playing Serpent Strike. I thought it was a meme, but someone baited <laughs> me into it. Very excited, but yeah, I saw you playing Serpent Strike, and you were telling people in your stream that Serpent Strike is like, yeah, that's what I'm going to play for 1.1. Maybe you're right. I mean, actually was meta. talking about the Rafters. This, that's, that's what I was referencing more. The Serpent Strike is just sort of like a, people were like, ah, play Serpent Strike. Yeah, it's funny because it's terrible. And I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Oh man, no, I saw the Raptors, the the new like Raptor gang, uh, many many Raptors. But that's that's where I'm, that's where I was focusing. We we have a joke that's been a long time out there talking about like what's what's the next companion in Beastmasters Arsenal's Ar- 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 Arsenal that's going to get the next you know unique item, next support for like a new build, because it's always Wolf 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 Wolf, and the people out there who play Scorpion are just dying. And like, oh man, did you hear about the new Void Scorpion build? Well, They're like, oh, are you kidding? Like, no, dude, it's gonna be a Void Scorpion build. It's a leak. It's coming the straight from me. The best part, <laughs> the best part about it, okay, is the fact that we've been waiting this long for a non-wolf companion unique, and it's still associated with wolf somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's gonna be great. I can't wait to see like a bunch of little raptors running around. It's gonna remind me of yeah. Jurassic Park. So before yeah, it's gonna become Chris Pratt. <laughs> and yeah, that, that was the so someone someone asked me at some point to like make a joke or make a reference to something like a leak that no one would figure out. And that was the that was the reference I was making was that's good. Was to 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 Jurassic Park. It was like Fred, Owen's friends or something like that. I can't remember exactly what I said. I uh <laughs> I, I was talking with um with Muffin, another member of the of the EHG team, because he was hanging out in chat. I was saying, like, Muffin, it is unreal talking about the upcoming patch because I'm a, I'm a community tester myself. And someone in chat pointed out, every time that a word comes out of my mouth, I'm either leaking something or I'm completely lying to you with a straight face. And that's ex- extremely exciting. I love that. I got, like, a little taste of how your day, every day must be. And that's pretty good. Yeah, it's it's tough. I I, I struggle quite frequently with, like like holding things back and i'm just like (laughs) so often i'll just like blurt things out i'm like oh i can't say that quick cover cover just kidding (laughs) it's a joke so do you do you want to launch into last epoch questions or do you want to launch into whether you're actually a woodworking amateur connoisseur is this is this like a real thing that you did like did you make this and send this to me Oh, the, 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 like, the, the wobbly thing? I can't yeah, see, yeah, sorry. The, 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 oh, sorry, the it's, wobbly it's on thing? Twitch, but I have my camera disabled here. Yeah, the uh, wobbly yeah. thing that you sent out to all the content creators. Like, is, is this actually, like, did you make this, or did someone else make this? I, I, I did not make that, no, no, no. But you no, are no. into woodworking. woodworking. Yeah, a, a little. Here, I can show you. I've got, um, this is the probably one of the last things that I made with my grandpa. Cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, we, we would take, like, so we, we would do little woodworking projects together, and then, like, 
there's tons of like scrap wood left over always. So we'd make little boxes like that um, for various things. All right. Dread, you and me. The next time we do like a variety stream, we're just like, go do some woodworking, right? That would be great. We even live next to each other, so it'd be not easy. that close. But you actually live next to my cousin, so maybe maybe I'll come pay you a visit sometime. Mm-hmm. All right, listen, chit chat. Let's talk. Fast I did fast. have one non last epoch question. Oh, fine, okay. fine, 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 fine. So I noticed um, over the past few years now, because of the because of your guys is uh, like you want to do like the dev streams and stuff like that. You have essentially enshrined yourself as like an accidental like uh streamer at this point like how has it been uh accidentally making yourself into like this quote-unquote like streamer at this point with the you know the you know the dev streams how's it been uh you know streaming <laughs> yeah it's it's been it's been really slow and really gradual but it's like i really enjoy doing it um it's something so like i mean before i even cons- like consider te- like we'll talk 10 years ago I at one point had aspirations of like, I'm going to go become a streamer, that sort of thing. And like um, considered it and like started getting stuff together to do it and never really did anything. So it's something that like I was interested about a while ago. And uh, it's nice to be able to, I guess, sprinkle in a little bit of it into my life without fully committing to it. Is, uh, is anyone else on the EHG team jealous that you're like, you're the one who gets to do it? I, I don't know. Maybe hmm, um, right. if any of you are and are watching happy to have you on uh, or, yeah. t- or take the reins for a turn on, on a couple days or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll to, share. To give you an idea, uh, if someone for some reason is living under a rock and doesn't know who we're, ta- who we are talking to, uh, Mike has become a legendary figure in the community, not only, not only for the dev streams, right. And for like the ask the devs part which is like the best part about this game sometimes because whenever i have a problem i can literally just ask the devs if i want to for some uh, i don't know why i can do that but i can it's great but you have become famous for the immense amount of patience that you have shown when answering questions like when we see when we see someone write a an unscrupulous message in the ask for the devs section we all turn our heads looking at it and waiting for your response because we're like "Ooh, it's like is mike gonna get a little angry this time and we're like watching it's like and then every single time you're just an absolute like angel and it's amazing and like we 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 like you should be proudful of that because perry and i could not do that <laughs> I did <find> it so <laughs> thank <quick>. you <laughs> it, it is very difficult i just this morning had a question that i wrote out an answer to i'm like oh that's way too sarcastic to leave. <laughs> so i delete a lot of answers yeah it, it's it's amazing how much you've like become part of last epoch now like whenever i think of last epoch you're there in my memory and i'm sure that there's a lot of people that uh that treat you that way too it's just it's crazy to think that like you know like you've essentially become part of last epoch because of all this yeah like, that's i mean it, it is really cool it's it's kind of weird to think about and you're like thank you i guess that's all i got <laughs> all right let's let's move into the first couple questions that we got here specifically about last epoch not about hair not about patience not about woodworking but something that's coming up like in the future of Last Epoch. So I'm going to jump in for this one. My question is, what's the plan for crit versus non-crit? And the reason that I asked this question is like, when I played in Path of Exile, one of the things that I loved most was Elemental Overload. I loved that it gave you a way to scale your damage, but you, could, you didn't necessarily need to be like crit chance, crit multi everywhere. And you could build like some extra tankiness. And you could be like a juggernaut. You could be a tanky boy, but still have a way to scale stuff. So we've got Singularity, we've got a unique idol. Is that what we're expecting going forward? We have more plans for crit versus non-crit. Is crit like the de facto, this is the way to build high-end characters? Or what's that look like to you? Yeah, so I think there's a, a whole bunch of things going on as as usual with, with almost every balancing thing like this. Um, people really like crit. That's that's a really popular thing just on a surface. Even when it, like when a system is more simple, you, there's lots of other games where there's like less moving parts and things like that. And you get into that RPG or just RPG space in general. People love crit. It's 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 exciting when you see a big number pop up out of nowhere. It's it's fun. It's engaging. All these sorts of things. People like crit. Um, and I think that that sort of drives a little bit of the 
uh, design side of things where it's like, it's easy to make things that you're like, people are going to like this. Um, so I think that a, like crit probably gets a little more attention and focus than it maybe should sometimes. Um, and I think singularity was the first attempt at bringing a little bit of love to war, like away from crit towards other things. Um, and I, I can't, I can't say like, Hey, we're fo- really focusing on non crit style things moving forward or anything like that. But I, I do think that it's really important that we, um, you know, have, have variety in these things and non crit hit based builds is, is something that we are interested in promoting a little bit more than we are now. So Dread, it, and I I, really, yeah. and Dread and I have a new favorite item that's going to be everywhere. Dread, what, what's your uh, what's your opinion on the new uh, minion ring that has a bunch of minion text, but also crit? Oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> uh, this is this is hard to talk about with with you here because uh, to mention this ring is to also mention my disfavor with the nerf to the uh, meteor belt specifically. So like before it launched, it had like six percent base crit on it, which was crazy because that was the first time we've had base crit on a different item that wasn't the helmet, the prismatic gaze, and like your weapon. And then it got removed and we're all sad. We're like, no, the base crit. Uh, so I can like play with all these new stuff. And then now we have the ring. So I'm like, yes, yes, we have base crit again o- outside of your uh, outside of your helmet and your weapon. Like those rings, like I-, I love those rings. I love that you guys have been pushing for uniques that have texts on them that mention skills, but also are usable outside of that. Like for instance, the perfect example of this is the new the new spear, the plague dragon's tongue, where sure, if you care about locusts, you care about locusts and you have all those locusts, but like turns out 200 flat damage and 40% attack speed and like the base crit on a spear, that's enough to make it seem like usable, which is amazing. Like that's that's it's crazy that you guys have been doing that of like, like that was like one problem Perry had actually specifically. Like it, it's a spear, but it's also enormous. And like we have the new event horizon to end in maze. And it's like there's no real synergy with event horizon except that it's absolutely enormous. So maybe I'll use it anyways. Like, you know, if that ends up being the identity of them. But uh yeah, I think there's yeah. go ahead. I think I think there's a, a, a niche for items where they can where you have almost like anti synergy built into the item, but then the item has like a higher power budget in general. So that you have like, you can use the item outside of the intended spec. If like some of the things on the item don't synergize perfectly with the intended spec, but the whole thing has more stats overall because of it. Uh, I think that's kind of what happened there a little bit, which is, I, I think a good thing. Cause it means that you can, you get more variety that you can use the item in. I think, I think the LP system very easily adds to that and makes that yeah. actually a viable thing. Cause like, sure, this item only has two lines of text. that's so important for my build, but I can add the three to four more if I want to, if I can get it right. Yeah. The LP system does so much to address like how you get to conceptualize items, like how you get to design them, how I get to use them. Like, Oh, it's so good. I'm going to spend like the entire day talking about this, but we're going to move on uh, in the interest of finishing this in the next two hours, because I know we have a hard stop eventually. So let's yes. talk about having more content added into the game. So we have, um, we have like the first time there's a pinnacle boss content for a long time as a content creator, I get to talk to brand new players who are like just starting out. And I say things like the game's not as hard as path of exile. It's very beginner friendly. Like you can, you can push to a thousand corruption, but you don't need to, cause there's nothing waiting there. So this is the first time that we have something that really raises the floor for like having more power in our builds. Like, we can't just play a ZDBS build with no HP. We need something, because all of a sudden, there's something to aspire to. So instead of just a skill being okay, it's not great, but in patch 1.1, we have content that's unavailable to Ignite Melee Cinder Strike, for example. Like, is is this an issue? Is this Does this mean that Ignite Melee Cinder Strike is going to get buffed? Or is this is this something that's okay? Like, is it is it okay for EHG to have bad builds that don't get to do the pinnacle content? Yeah, I, I think that there's, I, I think it's okay. I think I think it's would be foolish of us to try and cater to every single build to hit that hit that minimum mark. Um, of of like, I think trying to look at the pinnacle boss as a minimum mark would be, I think, a mistake on our part. And I think you'd end up with the situation where there's um, people who were. It's really hard because there's, there's, there's just such a wide range of players and such a wide spectrum of players, and it's not like a, people just fit neatly into one camp or neatly into another camp. 
Um, but I think you can, you'd end up with, if we did, if we did aim for the pinnacle boss as like that, that low mark of like every build should be able to do this. It's like, it's the big thing, but like everyone should, should get there. Um, you'd end up with people who are, who are wanting that difficult content to push for and are really trying to, to, to min max their builds and things like that. Even, even if they're not quite min maxing, but if like, that's their goal, um, they, they'd find it too easy. They find that content too easy. Um, and if we manage to make it so that people could kind of get there with with any style of build but it wasn't too easy for min maxing people I, I think you'd be in a situation where basically everything just did one damage you know like everything's just the same um and as, cause as soon as you have those like builds that like are more powerful than others it that's what drives the the theory crafting that's what drives the I, in my opinion the, a lot of the juice in arpgs is that like how can i improve my build how can i make something be- make it better and that sort of stuff and for that to happen there has to be things that aren't as good in there right so um i don't think i i don't think that i mean there's so many players that don't even make it to empowered monoliths in the first place um with their builds that like i i think if if we were aiming for pinnacle boss to be that like hey everyone is going to be able to handle this no problem near the start of the, the cycle or whatever it's it would be i think it would be a mistake on our part um i mean if someone's playing really really casually really slowly over a long period of time for the whole cycle or even in legacy they'll they'll, they'll be able to get there eventually it's just going to take a little bit longer to farm up the gear and that sort of stuff and which i think makes sense because people who are investing a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort are getting there faster i think that makes sense you know what this reminds me of recently um uh, with the uh, elden ring dlc if you've been living under a rock uh <laughs> so uh recently uh the devs were like You know, like half of you guys like haven't even gotten to the point where like you could actually even access the DLC, right? (laughs) I think it's like kind of like that, where it's like, 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 why are we talking about this? And like, but you know, like through our numbers, almost none of you got to this part. (laughs) It's such a funny way of saying. And 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 I think that speaks a lot to like the the. Because when when you're when you're looking at and engaging in like secondary content for the game, like going to forums, going to uh, streams, going to discords and things like that, you are engaging with people that are typically more committed to the game and, and are and are pushing higher and are getting more stuff done. And so you, it, it I think it kind of warps the view of like what most people are achieving in the game a little bit. And so it can feel like the the average of the baseline um, player is a lot more um, invested and and a lot more uh, like like pushing a lot harder and playing a lot more than uh, than it actually is. So Dread, do you think you'll be using all 10 of your Harbinger I keys on your very first boss kill? Or do you think it'll only uh, take one? I'm going to be playing Avalanche, so probably not. <laughs> well, you think it's going to be that good? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I'll, give you, I'll give you four. I think you'll, you'll do it in four. Four? All right. You know what? I'll remember that. Okay. We're, we're going to do it. You know what? So, so, you know what? If, if I... If I do not get it within four, okay, I will buy a bee suit myself and I will wear it. <laughs> I love I, it. I, that's a promise. All right. Okay? All right. Sounds great. So is that I'll, is I'll that get another with- one if you do. If you do get it in four, I'll I'll get another one because mine I had to throw mine out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for someone to like send me a clip of them doing it with melee ignite cinder strike. Now that I've already dumpstered that bill, yeah, right. so, yeah, good. Actually, that's a that's a actually an interesting uh, question I have that relates to that specifically. Go ahead. Um, so this is a two prong question. The first one, this is just a mechanical one, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. The harbinger when you kill the the you know the monolith boss, right? You're done with that. The harbinger shows up. That harbinger will scale with the corruption and the modifiers of that, right? So mm-hmm. is there is there going to be this kind of like weird echelon eventually where like the Harbinger is going to be more more difficult or tankier than Aberroth himself? Or do you guys feel like as though you guys have like set oh, up Aberroth? Oh, you mean like Aberroth is set difficulty, but the Harbingers yeah. scale up. Okay. It, yeah. it is technically possible to have the timeline bosses and... I mean, it's it's technically possible to have a random trash mob be more powerful than Aberroth <laughs> if you if you scale corruption to a bajillion. Yeah. Um, so so yes, that, that is possible. Um, hopefully, we've done uh, something a little bit right, and um, there's that that situation is extremely difficult to uh, to to get into. 
Yeah, like I don't think that's gonna happen like below like a thousand corruption or anything like that, right? Like they're they're appropriately balanced for that specifically. I'm just curious. That's well, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it is it is technically possible for the harbingers or or anything really that's in the monolith or in the arena even to scale higher than what Abroth is sitting at. Yeah. Let me take this as an opportunity to like move into our next question here. So we're already mm-hmm. talking about like getting to a thousand corruption or two or three or four thousand corruption. And one of the things that dissuaded me personally from pushing high corruption in the past, or I guess in this past 1.0 patch, was the time investment for pushing corruption. So currently, it's like a linear scaling of difficulty. Like if you're at 400, going to 800 just means that the monster is going to be twice as tanky and deal twice as much damage. The difference between like linear scaling and the change that just happened to Ward, where it used to be linear and now it's like a quadratic thing, it, it got me thinking, are we ever going to see like difficulty scale faster so that I can get harder content sooner? Maybe. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a maybe. Okay. I'll give you a, um, it's something we've, it's, it's been in discussions. It's been part of our design meetings. It's, it's not, uh, I, I don't want to say hard no, but like, um, it's, it's not something we've done for 1.1. 1. 1. Um, it's not impossible. Okay. I'll take it. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it's I, a bad, so like personally, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think there's, um, like you, you get into a situation. I think it's the reason it's not there so much is because you can, or the reason it wasn't there originally probably is because, um, for a while or quite a while, you, there was no way to lower corruption. Mm-hmm. Um, and with no way to lower corruption and a, like, um, a quadratic increase to the, to the difficulty, it was, there'd there'd be a there'd be a point where you could like complete one complete something and the jump is so much higher that you're just like well now i'm now i'm priced out of this uh content type thing so it's um you know as as others others um systems around it change maybe <laughs> i like that i mean i don't know if i if i were at like a thousand corruption and i i did my robes and i got plus 100 off it or something use my you know gaze my four gaze stacks if I got to a point where like the next monsters are super tanky, I'd be like, oh, I found the sweet spot. Like maybe, maybe this is the right point for me. So like, then, then I lower it a little bit and then I start cruising. Like, oh, I, yeah. I would like to find a place like that. Yeah, uh, it's it, and we've started experimenting with a little bit more control over that with the with that new um, tile in the center of the of the Echo Web. Yeah, the most beautiful place in the entire game that some people have never even been to, and the yeah. camera moves around and the temples there. What a beautiful place. There's yep. there's a little more uh so the camera moving is pretty controversial actually. Oh really? Um I think it looks gorgeous. Uh and there's a little bit more of that we we've refined it a little bit and updated it a little bit and there's a little bit more of that in the new um the new new content as well. Um that I think works so well. But yeah. All right, Dred, what about high corruption? How are you feeling about how long it takes to get there these days? Uh I think I think if the expectations of EHG is around 300 to like 500 ish. I think getting to a thousand is a completely fine amount of time. It's just after that is when it starts getting like absurd. And the thing is though, is actually going to uh, lean into the question I had right now is I see that you like, I watch the acid devs because I like knowing everything, you know, cause like it helps me out. I've learned a lot just by watching you answer questions specifically. And I've noticed recently uh, with all of these stuff, talking about corruption and all this, you have been borderline harassed about it. What are your thoughts about it? Like your personal thoughts, not like what, you know, like what the game is, but like what's your personal thoughts about it after being like essentially interrogated over it over the past few weeks? I, I think that there are, some I, I I'm I think I'm nowhere near qualified to like understand why people feel the way they do sometimes with um with how corruption's changing and the amount you can get to before and how you can't get to now. Um and I I I think there's probably some underlying reason why that feeling is showing up for people and it's a real feeling for them. Um so I don't want to discount that. Um like it's it's it feels it sometimes can feel really bad to have that number reduced. Um I don't understand why. And I would love to understand why, because I think we'd be able to um, make a better game if we understood why that that feeling was being evoked, because it is. Um, I don't I, like any time someone comes in hot about it. I do not take it personally at all. 
Um, <laughs> so I, I think, I think EAG needs crazy. to hire. EAG's got to hire like like a therapist or like a game psychologist or something. Just like, what does this person <laughs> yeah. really mean? What are they talking about? Go through their chat I'm, history. To go into it a little bit here, I think what the problem is is in this day and age of gaming, there is like a set amount of content that the developer wants you to do. So like, for instance, if I start like, I don't know, like Elden Ring, right? And I go and play it and I get through it all and then I kill the end game boss, I feel finished, if that makes sense. But since corruption, right, is quote unquote infinite, the only finish point that can be realistically set other than you guys is by the community. And of course, because of certain things that we won't mention here in terms of build uh, stuff, you know, since they got nerfed and all that, but still like, because of that, that kind of like feeling of when I feel finished has raised to an absolutely absurd level for like at least just one patch right because of like all of the profane veil stuff one like, one patch like when, that had a huge influx of player yeah. base yeah when you yeah, i think that's you, i think that's a really important part yeah when you see your favorite streamer uh using profane veil and getting to 40k ward and facing content at like 3k corruption or whatever because they've been playing all day you feel like as though that's the quote-unquote finishing moment which in reality there is no finishing moment and i think that is why they feel like that is like because people like to finish things right uh you know and in this case here with the pinnacle boss being added i think a lot more people are going to gravitate towards that so instead of like uh, people are going to ask me and Perry, and trust me, it's going to happen. Be like, is this build Aberroth viable? Mm -hmm. Is yeah. this build Aberroth viable, Tread? And that's going to be the new quote unquote end point. I, think I, that's I look forward to it. Like, if the, yeah. the, in, the end game is trivializing Aberroth, you know, if you can kill him in 30 seconds, who cares how much corruption you do? Like, your build's awesome. Yeah. And, and that's, I think I said this on stream a couple weeks ago. Is I, was, I was like, I really, I think what I said was, I really hope the conversation turns from. Uh, is like to, to determine viability of a build to turns from hey what corruption can it do to hey how fast can it kill Abroth and I, I think that is going to be a really positive change I hope so yeah. yeah and I think the weird thing about it is most of the time I've talked to people that feel that way like you know like the people that interrogate you some of them are people I know and talk to on a daily basis and the way that they feel about it and the way that like I've seen is it's usually people that are in the lower stuff in the lower content and they haven't gotten to that point yet, but they're like looking at it as like a future goal, right? Mm -hmm. With the corruption stuff. And I think Aberath is going to be a good uh, replacement of that because I think if the corruption stuff stays how it is and we didn't have Aberath, this would be a an unending problem because mm -hmm. since you can infinitely push corruption, people are going to be looking for that next build that pushes even higher, and then that's going to be the new standard. And I think adding the static difficulty like this is going to fix a lot of those problems. And I think because we didn't really have that, because let, let's be real, essentially, like for people who have been playing for a long time, T4 Drill has become like the equivalent of like a guardian boss in like Path of yeah. Exile, right? You just go and kill it whenever. And that is mainly why I think people like because like the people who are already there, they don't feel like that. They're like, oh, my God, I can keep pushing, keep pushing and having fun. It's usually the people that are going to get the, to there and they feel like that because of that. I'm going to try to move on to the next question. Mike, do you have anything mm -hmm. else you want to say about the, like the corruption stuff? No, I, I, I th I'm, I'm just really excited for this change. And I think uh, I think you guys are right on the fact that it's uh, shifting it to Pinnacle Boss as that benchmark is going to be, I think it's going to be a wildly positive thing for the game. Um, it is something that we wanted to have in 1.0, and I'm really excited to see the impact it has in 1.1. Let's move for just a moment. Instead of talking about corruption, let's talk about the factions that were introduced in 1.0. We had a lot of dynamic stuff that was going on. We had like, some hot fixes. We had like, some gold dupes and exploits that went on. But by and large, I have a question about like the performance of each faction and how that feels to you or like other interior members of EHG. Um, how, like moving forward, how does that play? Like, the, do you want to change them? Or, or is any of them weaker, stronger? Are they performing as you'd expected? Like, what what is that about for you? Yeah, I, I think it's 
largely pretty much as expected. Um, I think there was maybe a little like it, we, we were a little bit off on what we were expecting to happen. Um, but I think generally we were, we were mostly expecting merchant skill to be able to be stronger overall, just because trade is so flipping strong. Um, but the people who were really, really not interested in trade were, were, were having a lot of fun playing COF. And then that was the most important thing for us was that like, and I think that a lot of people, I know I said leading up this a bunch of times, like a successful version of this to me would be when a new player shows up and says, Hey, MG or COF. And the response is, do you like trade or not? Um, and, and maybe we didn't quite get there, I don't think, but I think we got very close. And I think it's um, the amount of information we got from that first cycle is going to drive a lot of really positive change um, for both those systems. Uh, and I think that the, like, the, the biggest negative feedback we got on Merchant Skill had mostly had to do with um, like, like the way you interact with it. I said like the UI the- sounds awful. <laughs> Sorry? I said the UI. I've heard nightmare yeah. stories about it. Um, it is, it it was, it is getting improvements. Um, we are actively very, I know there weren't a lot of things, uh, shared for 1.1 with merchant skilled UI improvements yet. Um, there were a lot of things, uh, in, there were technical limitations that, that forced us down very specific paths with the UI, um, that we have slowly been peeling back and, uh, and fixing those, those underlying issues that are allowing us to now change the UI. So there are, there are updates to the UI coming that are going to make it, um, much more efficient to interact with uh, just, just because we don't want you to spend as many times in menus. Cause that's not fun. Um, so that, that is, that is in the pipe and will continue to be in the pipe. Um, Cause that is really an important part for a lot of players is, I, is we, we, we want you to, to interact with the merchant skill and interact with the bazaar as little as possible. Busy work. I like love want, that you've already, to... I love that you've already talked about fun. Just saying like, if, if someone comes in, they're playing CWF or Merchant's Guild, like the, the important, most important part of like the video games, like it's fun. You don't regret your decision. And like, I yeah. play CWF and I think I'm going to keep playing CWF because like, it's how I want to engage with the game. It's a lot weaker than Merchant's Guild, but like, I still like it and I don't feel bad about it. So Dread, what, what, what do you think about this? I think that in the future, I think as long as people are very open about like which faction their characters are a part of when they like make videos and stuff like that. Oh my God. Is specifically like, you know, that's like part of it too is like when you see someone with like uber good gear, but they're in merchant skilled, you're like, okay, he just farmed a little bit and got it. Right. But then when you look at that in COF, you're like God tier gamer, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. And I think as long as that, mentality stays with it instead of this direct comparison like like playing cof obviously uh i've done it a bunch now because i've been doing a bunch of cycle start testing and it is definitely way more difficult to get a character running in cof than it is merchant skilled and i like that i i I like that that that's that i think having different versions of last epoch is a good thing I feel yeah. like it's important for us to share our jokes with the devs when we have the opportunities and we've got this joke about playing melee like if there's any melee enjoyers out there, like you need to play Merchant's Guild. Merchant's Guild. It's it's incredibly easy. All the best items in the game cost like a hundred thousand gold. You'll have just like the most yeah. insane melee character you've ever had. Yeah, and um, there are, it, yes, <laughs> we we are well aware of that joke. Um, and I I do want like I'd like to see a lo- things like that lesson in severity um but i mean you know things like that are going to happen naturally no matter what um there are a few i can tease this there's a few mechanical changes to both cof and merchant skilled that we have planned um that didn't make it into 1.1 so like 1.2 1.3 going forward there are more um there's there's more juice to squeeze out of these out of these um oranges i haven't heard it before but i'll take it i like it more juice more oranges But we've also heard like more factions in the future might be a possibility. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The faction system was built very, um, very intently on being modular and being something that we can add to in the future. And like um, when when new content comes in, using that faction system as a framework for progression through that content is something we are planning on doing going forward. Just like with the Harbinger stuff, it's technically a faction, yeah. but it's not mutually exclusive with the first two that we've already seen. Yeah, and cool. and there can be like going forward, there can be new factions that'll have single entries in the faction, dual entries, tri entries, like like they they can be multiples, like 
it, there, there's no real rules on how many there. Mm -hmm. Maybe not too many. <laughs> this is... Oh, go ahead, Dread. Oh, I said, what I like is in the future, okay? There will be another endgame pinnacle boss, and their system is going to be a choice of either or of the Forbidden Knights. Could be. So yeah. that, that will be inherently good for the economy because the people who are playing the Forbidden Knights faction need items from the other one, but they can't get it as easily because they can't get to it. And I think that will be the most exciting part when it comes to in the future, when we get another set of like another faction that's like that. And then people have to actually choose. Mm -hmm. And that is like when like, I'm going to be like, Oh my God, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. I think that awesome. would be, we, we need a lot more content to do that. that that's one of the things. Oh, like, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah what, course. What, <laughs> if we're splitting up content. We're like, you have to pick between the content you're playing. There has to be a lot of content to pick from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of like opportunity cost, I'm going to move into like this next question. And this is about like having new content added to the game, new skills, new stuff, as opposed to bug fixes. And we've had a couple other content creators on this podcast in the past. And we asked them questions like, hey, what are you most looking forward to? What's the new skill? What's the new class? What's the new? And they say like bug fixes. It's like, I like your answer. I agree with your answer. It's not a very hyped up answer, but I like the answer. So how do you determine whether you're like putting off fixing a node? Like, is it is it about knowing these things ahead of time? Or like, how do you determine whether you're going to put effort into that or just put effort into like new shiny stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's there's there's a few people that that that's their whole job is just is answering that question that's their whole job um and so they uh, it's not me <laughs> so i don't do this every day but i can go over some rough things in the way we decide this and it's usually a combination of like severity and and reach and like just i guess impact that it would have um and then and difficulty to fix so like and it's really it's like keeping all that organized and um you know moving forward is is a, a colossal task so they've, they've got a lot of work set out for them to just do that really um and i think what it more comes down to is we just look at the resources we have and uh sort of be like okay well you're gonna go fix some bugs for a while okay well you're gonna go work on new content for a while and it's just sort of like how much can they get done how much can they get done um and it's less about looking at individual pieces and saying like, okay, well, this is a bug that needs to be fixed and it's more important than this content that needs to be added. Um, and it's, it's more just like ranking the bugs against each other and ranking the content against it's each other of other content. Um, and then like splitting the, 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 the people who, who you're working on, who's working on what uh, up. And, and that's I think, roughly more the, the comparison. That makes sense. I hear you. Yeah. Speaking of uh, bugs, actually, uh, sadly, due to a lot of stuff happening around with 1.0 um last epoch has been uh kind of known in the streets you know in the the you know like the people chatting i i see other people talking all the time about this specifically about like the game being bugged to a point where it's sometimes like people have problems with it i'm just curious like how do you guys feel about that specifically like do, do you feel like that's warranted or like what how do you feel about that i think that uh... I think that there, because there's so many nodes um, and I think that if you pick, if you, if you do happen to pick a path that is bugged, um, it can, it can feel a little bit, I, th I think it's I think the shortest, I think it's disproportionate. I, I think that if you, if you do hit some of those bugs, maybe you hit one, then you try to build and you hit another one. Let's say you get unlucky and hit two in a row. And it can, I think that sample size can make you feel like, Oh my god! I hit two in a row. Are they all like this? And uh, people are so much more likely, understandably, uh, to complain about something like this on, on, on a forum or whatever uh, than than someone who's just like, I'm just gonna play, and then they're they're off in their own world playing and having fun. Um, and so I think that like there are a lot more people just hanging out in their own world playing and having fun. Uh, then, then there are people who are coming to that are hitting all these bugs and all that sort of stuff. But you see and hear a lot more of the people that are having the bug, uh, bug experiences and things like that. So I think that that reputation gets a little snowbally sometimes. Um, but it is still very important to us, and and that is something that we work extremely hard to uh, to, to to cull as many bugs as we can. And we've been re just recently we've been adding more devs onto the team specifically to hunt down bugs. We're like 
we're hiring you and, and like you're 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 gonna hunt down a lot of bugs here in the first the first few months. Like that's that's what's happening. We're playing um, we're hell, we're ready to go. <laughs> I was taking questions on Discord from people who like wanted to brainstorm things that we could ask you about. Uh, the question that I just asked about like bug fixes versus new content, the question started out as why won't you fix my build? And then we just kind of workshopped it until we got to, you know, a, a more appropriate question that we could bring to you. Just like fix my build, I mean, Mike. Come on, please, please. I have I have I have like when we very first started in the dev streams, like uh, five years ago or something, we, we was really early on. No one knew about us. And we started, we did, we did about a dozen dev streams. Um, and we actually, like, I was streaming, making the game. I was streaming code. I was like, just people were like, Hey, I found a bug. And I'm like, all right, let's go fix it together. Um, I mean, obviously I can't stream code anymore, but uh, I, I think that'd be a great thing to do. I think that'd be a ton of fun. I don't know. It's, it would be really tricky to pick out ones that are like fast enough to do on stream um, or to do live or something like that. But I'd love a, I don't know, some, some sort of community bug pool or voting system and be yeah. like, I'm going to fix one bug a week from this pool, whichever one's voted to the top of the list. Then I'll, we're, we're going to get, we're going to get way off topic on this, but there there's absolutely, by the way, in case you want to go do this on your side projects, there is an audience for that on Twitch. If you want to like go like yeah. code and whatnot, if people love it, it's great. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people that are like me that play a lot, right? They forget to realize that like the reason why you're finding so many bugs is you're trying to play everything. Like for instance, for me, for my like my content, I like to play everything. It's like my goal is to play everything or at least attempt to, obviously, because I can't do everything. But that's like why I, I see all these bugs constantly, and I don't I don't feel like. Like a lot of people like put it towards like maliciousness for some reason. Like, oh no, they they bugged my skill and now it's awful. I hate it. And it's like, like, like I, I never got that because like whenever I see a bug, whenever I'm playing a build, I'm just like, all right, I guess we have to save this for the future. It's not like, it's not like disappointment towards the company that made the game. It's just more like, eh, this thing's broken. I'll come back to it. You know, I, I feel like a lot of people are way too uh, focused on thinking that there's like, you know kind of like maliciousness tied to this. I think, I think a lot of times it's, uh, yeah, it's some, sometimes it might be coming all across that way for sure. I don't know. I, I sometimes feel it's almost like it's attributing apathy to it. And that, that yeah. almost hurts more a little bit. I'm like, no, I want to fix it. I really want to fix it. <laughs> if someone could screenshot that face right there, I'd really appreciate that. We're going to go to the next question. I think this one's a short one, but uh, there was a Reddit thread a couple months ago. And uh, I, I feel, I feel like it must be weird, like seeing like the CEO of the company jump on Reddit and be like, "Hey, does anyone have ideas?" So yeah. Judd, a Mox Jet, he jumped on Reddit. And he's like, "Hey, everyone, you have any unique ideas?" And there was a explosion of responses on Reddit where everybody and their uncles started submitting different unique ideas for like how to make new stuff in Last Epoch. Are any of those? in the works that was, was that a good thread was it a bad thread are there are there items coming in 1.1 that were influenced because of that yeah i think it was a fantastic thread i i love reading uh i love reading ideas for things like that i love reading like i love it when you get a lot of people having like one line ideas that that's 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 what i love when, when you have like this huge block of really detailed specific ideas where someone's like 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 put a and i don't want to discount this because it is fantastic when you see it but when when there's like really specific ideas for an item where we'll be like this is how much damage it has this is how much crit it has this is how much poison it has this is how much i know it's anti-synergy whatever yeah. but the like we, when it's really specific and detailed like that i think you get away from the core of why the ideas are important and interesting and that thread did what i think did really well is people were throwing out really simple like um like I don't know what the term for it is really distilled versions. There we go. Really distilled versions of their ideas where it's like just an item that does this, an just item that focuses sense. on that. And yeah, just like one liners for whole items. And, and those are really where I think the really great ideas come from. And there's so many details on how items get built and how skills get built and passives get made and all those sorts of things that like um, building the whole item on, on its, on its face and submitting the entire item as an idea is really rare to get a second look at um because there's there's so many like you look at the item and you go okay well like can't do that can't do that can't do that but like the thing the real like the thing that caused them to make the item was actually the thing we could do but because there's all these ideas in there that you can't do you discount the whole thing like, i don't um, i don't know exactly what the item should do but i want multiple raptors 
Like, yeah, exactly. Talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and so the thread was really good because it had a ton of those little one liner ideas. So I had a blast reading through it. Um, and there was, I can't point to a specific example. I, I think someone asked this and I went and looked through it and tried to find some. And I think I pulled one out that I'm like, I think that was turned into an item. Um, but I know there's things that were definitely influenced by it at the very least. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Dread, my favorite one. Dread, do not pitch your, your unique idea. This is not the oh, right no, time. I was going to talk about my favorite uh, unique uh, because of this uh, thread. Oh, for 1.1? Like, one. Yeah, because like one of them I liked the most was like, uh, the 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 sacrifice one. What is it called again? Cruelty. Yeah, I just relic. like that someone just had their mind or like, what? If, like we have we have all these nodes that like make minions sacrifice. What if they just sacrifice themselves instead? Wouldn't that be easier? And then that <laughs> item was born. And I, I love that kind of design because I hate it when when I'm playing like Poe or Le or Diablo or whatever, right? An RPG and there's like a new unique and it's just like 60 percent increased health it's unique because it has the most health in the game i like seeing the the mechanical uniques but obviously those are the hardest to implement right like because they take dev time to make it so that minions want to sacrifice themselves right yeah oh yeah there's like like making a unique item that's just a bunch of stats that you could find on other items like i can go make one in 30 seconds easy it'll drop it'll work it'll play uh, like no problem. As soon as there's anything, any, as soon as there's anything interesting on the item, uh, it's like oh, it's at least an hour minimum <laughs> just just to implement it. I, the I, I do a I, I do a build contest like at the beginning of every patch, like trying to grab like some new unique item, some new skill or something, and like encourage people to go explore it in new different ways. I'm having a hard time this patch. The 1.1 1 .1 unique items look awesome. My just, least just favorite time picking one. My least favorite kind of unique item is something that just has like skill name, skill name, skill name, skill name, skill name. Or like it's very clear. You just like one thing with it. Like Jelcor's blasting knife. I love making fun of that thing because it does one thing. It only does one thing. But like all these unique items that are coming one point one, I feel like I feel like they're catering to me because they're all like they got some spice on them, but they're just a little bit generic, and you can do all kinds of stuff with them. I just feel like the unique items are so good. Nice. You're welcome. I'm glad you're excited about this. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, it's always the best part, like waiting to see the new uniques. Like that's like what I'm always <laughs> excited for. We talked about skills a moment ago, not only unique items that you get to design, but uh, recently, Mike, on a different podcast, you were saying that you realized you haven't been on the side of making new skills recently, and you were thinking that you'd like to get back to that, and that's like your own career. That's the kind of stuff you want to do in EHG. Have yeah. you put thought into like like? If you want to do a mastery, what mastery do you want to work with to give them a new skill? Are you trying to make like a paladin skill? Are you excited for the next big rogue skill? Like, what are you thinking about that you want to spend your time on? I mean, I, right now it's just uh, happy to do anything really. I think I like working on rogue skills the most, um, but at the same time, like finishing off paladin has been a long time coming. And I know, I know what skill we've got planned for it, and I'm excited for it. So I do really want to do that one. Um, <laughs> Go on. Would you like to let us know? <laughs> <laughs> I got so excited all of a sudden. All right. Good try. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's tough. That they're all they're all fun. I like working on all all the classes, all the masters. Um, yeah, I I think I think I'm gonna say paladin. Cause I do, I do know the, what the, the last one is there. Um, and there's, I, <laughs> this is tough. So like, I know things that are coming and happening. <laughs> there's a tricky question all of a sudden. Sure. Well, you tell you what, no, let me, there, let there's me, there's other uh, changes that are in that, in that general vicinity that I'm excited for that will have an effect on the thing that we're going to add to Paladin that I think will be really it, positive got and it, interesting. Got it. We, uh, yeah. we can talk about something else Paladin related, if you'd like to. Uh, there's it something actually... that me and some other Paladin enjoyers out there are lamenting about. Uh, I know. We've lost, <laughs> we've lost Hammer and Anvil stance. And Another I, thing I, you've been interrogated about. I, I put out this video a while ago talking about like the, the effective HP of, <laughs> of you know different archetypes in the game. And Paladins or Sentinels, they have a really high floor, but they just have kind of a lower ceiling than everyone else. And I feel like I've read so many of your responses and I've been in As the Devs and I know that, you know, they, they do have a good time stacking armor, but other classes can build armor too. They do get to use a shield, but other classes get to use a shield too. Like They're more how, efficient how, at using armor. They're more efficient at using a shield. Yeah, they're like they more are. efficient. 
Can we? Is the new paladin skill damage reduction? Is that? Just... <laughs> I I can't tell you anything no. about it. I'm sorry. How, Literal how nothing. You... Lips sealed. Let me let me ask the question in a better way. Um, you have things like lightning ages and flame ward and aspect of the boar and ursine maw, maw and dust shrouds and silver shrouds. You have all of these forms of defense that are like specific. You know, bone armor is over here, dust shrouds over there, and then the thing that sentinel gets to do is armor and block like they're more efficient at it but they're still generic toward everyone else like what what happened why how why 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 <laughs> <My sentinel. laughs> ah. there's there, there's a there's a, a slower shift happening in sentinel overarching defenses uh that's still in progress okay i'll take it that's all I, I can I, say right I now. I want there's, more. There's, there's another ability that's getting changed that okay. in, in there, like for, in a patch or two. I don't know when it's going to happen, but like there's another ability that's getting changed that's it's in this conversation too. And like, uh, uh, he's talking about rebuke, boys. Uh, he's yeah. about <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have I have all my good questions written down on my second monitor here. This question came from the second part of the list. We're like, I know this question's bad. But I just need to ask it because my poor Sentinels. I love Sentinels. Hammer and Anvil stance was just, it was a bad note. It was it, a really bad note. Bad, we, we bad had because get, it like wasn't good game design? Yeah, it was, it was I, bad I agree game with design. you, yes. Yeah. yeah, and so we had to get rid of the note. And I and I understand the frustration in the the like the defensive, the unique defensive layer for Sentinel kind of vanishing um, and, and feeling frustration over that for sure. Uh, and, I, and I think there's there, there is room for uh, some more options in there in the future. I'm I think excited to, to hear fix that. this issue, there should be an honorary unique made in Hammer and Anvil's, uh, you know, uh, name where it just reduces your damage, but let, let, you know, make makes you take less damage. I think that honestly, that's a good idea. Solution. That's <laughs> the solution. Make it a shield or something. I think that's the solution. Make it just a giant handle. <laughs> or maybe maybe a sentinel only helmet. Oh no, like make it like make a it a make it a weapon, just like the new um yeah. the new shield or so the new one handed axe that kind of looks like a shield. Make it make it like a two handed mace that looks like a shield. It's like you're wielding a door. Yeah. Yeah, great, cool, <laughs> done. We are we're designing new unique. Like items. a big dangly mace with like an anvil hanging <laughs> off the mace head. Oh I my god, I don't mind it. That's kind of cool. Or or a hat that's in the shape of an anvil. <laughs> as as long as we're doing some gimme questions here, I'm gonna take one that I saw pop up in Twitch chat, and this is a question that I see all the time. People say, "Hey, 1.1, I'm excited to come back. Do I still need to use volatile reversal?" And I say, "Yes." <laughs> yes. And then they but say, yeah, "Okay, I'll see you. I'll, I'll see you in 1.2. I'll come back later." <laughs> I love volatile reversal. What do you have any commentary that you'd like to provide for the people out there who don't like volatile reversal? I think volatile reversal is it's still missing. It's still not quite there yet. I think the design of it is uh it, there's so much potential locked behind volatile reversal. Um and and it's I think it's really interesting to see other games twists on the or our twists on other games depending on which way you look at it versions of these abilities. So like um, there's there's League of Legends has characters that do similar things. There's uh, Path of Exile has characters that, that do similar things. Um, there's 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 this style of like I'm gonna go back in time and like jump back to a position type abilities are um, they're really 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 difficult to play smooth um and and to be fun in their like just basic functionality while still being understandable and approachable and i think that it is so defensively powerful right now and not approachable enough that you're the, the players who aren't ready to make that like um functionality or investment like like brain power investment of just like concentration focus you know like because the, there's a lot there's a lot of people that want to play and, and relax a little bit and um, don't want to think about it too much. And right now, if you're using volatile reversal, you're either just like, "Hail Mary, here we go, let's see what happens," or you're really <laughs> having to think about it a lot. You know? Yeah. So it's it's I, I think there's 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 room for improvement there, functionality wise, in the like core functionality, um, especially that, that I think would would help a lot. And we're we are not blind to this uh, to this issue at all. Um, but like, it's almost a more extreme version of Hammer and Anvil stance in the situation where if we were just to like rip all that stuff out of it, it would be very problematic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, I would be out of the job. I'd have to delete, <laughs> like 30 videos on Sentinel. It'd be over. I think, yeah. I think Sentinel builds would be like, so it'd be so weird not having volatile. To reversal. give context of my side of all of this, by the way, is back in the day, 
when uh, Judgment first got reworked and Pious Offering was, you know, introduced into the game, the, the note that gives you more damage per mana. I made a, a build around that with Pious Offering and then using Reversal to refill back up my mana so I could stack a very large amount of mana. And I know that this happened because what happened was after I made that video, the day after, I literally went and checked the forums and there was instantly a post complaining about Volatile Reversal and specifically <laughs> mentioning the build that I played. It's like, I hate this. And uh, after that, I think uh, I think Tra uh, Trav, I think Trav talked to him and they had like a really long conversation about it. And then like a, about a few weeks after that, it got changed and nerfed and all that. And it just, it made me so happy because I realized that like Volatile Reversal, it, it was like a casual, like, like nightmare. Cause like, you know, like you take a build that like a lot of people want to play it, Righteous Fire, right? And they want to like casually play it and relax. But then you throw Volatile Reversal into there and it's like, <gasps> and I think, I think that's the first, first like, a nail in the coffin for why people hate Volta Reversal so much. <laughs> He's like, I want to play RF, but I don't want to have to think while doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a it's a very polarizing ability. Personally, I love how it plays right now. It is one of my favorite abilities in the game. I think it's it's it feels it's snappy. It's like it it let it opens up so many opportunities of like cool things where you can like trick your enemies and like you're like haha made you look like a fool there type type moments and I, I really enjoy that type of gameplay so like it it really hits home for me as an awesome thing but like it is not the same for everyone at all <laughs> we're gonna pause here for just a moment we are at the top of the hour uh in my big list of questions that we're working through i've got two more that i'd specifically like to uh ask for your input on um dread do you have any specific questions like i, I want to get a feel for how many questions we have left before we just kind of hang uh -huh. out no, I'm pretty good. We can keep going. Okay, so we got at least two questions left here, and then we'll hang out. If there's people in uh, Twitch.tv slash Pig who are watching right now, you can add EHG Photon, let him know any specific questions, and maybe we can get to those after these next two. We'll uh, we'll uh, figure out how much time we have left before uh, before we need to call it a hard stop. I, I, have, I, just, I have a hard out in 54 minutes. Okay. I love how, like, we mentioned Volatile Reversal, and there's immediately two camps posted in Twitch chat. There's either the <laughs> don't remove a reversal, and then there's the camp of reversal freaking sucks. I, I love <laughs> no. it so much. Well, you know, it, I, 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 there's no intention of removing it. It is, it is a fantastic, I think it is a iconic skill for the Void Knight at this point, and removing it would be very foolish. It, it kind um, of reminds me of um, like Mark Rosewater talking about like the design of Magic the Gathering saying that he doesn't want to design things that are sevens. He wants to design things that are like two or tens. Like a two or ten, if you hate it or you love it, it's going to be more of an emotional investment in the game rather than just like, here's the next Blase skill, here's the next Blase card. Blog a tog, it's great. Check it out. It's great. <laughs> so let's go to That's our... That's Mark Rosar's blog. <laughs> let's go to our second to last question that I specifically wrote down that I wanted to cover here. This is in the same um, it's in the same area of ha Hammer and Anvil stance. I want to talk about like damage reduction and masteries. I wanted to talk about dual wielding stuff so Ooh, dual wielding we when you when you dual wield you inherently take percent increased damage and one of the things that i say when i get on my soapbox and talk about why i love last epoch is that last epoch does opportunity costs so well the base type you only get two prefixes you only get two suffixes your idols have to fit in this slot even the um the upcoming changes that we might get someday with factions you have to pick this faction or this faction you have to pick merchant guild or cof like you have an opportunity cost no matter how strong something is you're always giving something up so when you are dual wielding you're giving up the possibility of using a shield you're giving up the possibility of using something like a titan heart why am i taking percent increased damage but tell me tell me more about that tell me more about like like opportunity costs in defenses and where the percent increased damage came from that's a that's an old that's an old decision. I do not remember exactly. I'm trying to remember. I guess. Um, I think it likely was just an attempt at balancing the like putting a more extreme on the choice. Um, like if if your defenses are equally viable in 
like dual wielding two hander and sword and board. I think there's the, the danger of it becoming kind of like of less of a um, less of a say it. Less an interesting choice. Yeah, I guess it's just a less interesting choice, really. Okay. Where it's where where you're where you're, there's kind of less less distinction, less personality behind the items or behind the decision. Um, and I think just having that be just a little bit more extreme while not having to. We I guess we didn't want to nerf the damage more. We didn't want to be like, all right, well, you're just going to deal less damage because dual wielding has access to so many powerful, um, unique effects that sit on weapons. There's just mm-hmm. there's so many options for really powerful effects that come from weapons and dual wielding has a lot of potential there. Um, and I think, I think it was just uh, an outlet valve for balancing that, that potential. I think, I think the, 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 the situation you're, you're talking about here with defenses being so important really is exacerbated by that. The, the same reason why hammer and anvil stance was so important to you. And which is why this was a jumping off question in the first place, I think uh, is that when you're pushing so high into super, super difficult content, the most important thing becomes your defenses, not your offenses. Um, and so this, this dual wielding has in, in especially like min max situations has a much more uh, negative impact on your overall character power. Yeah. That's actually how I view the situation right now because I come from Path of Exile. If my rain, if my uh, dead eye, you know, like my t- tornado shot dead eye, or in this case, lightning arrow dead eye, if it's slightly squishier than a different build, it's not really a big deal. I got six portals, but when you're in high corruption and that gaze of Oribus specifically, you lose all of it when you die. That's an awful feeling, man. It's an awful feeling, and you're changing that. And I think that might help a little bit because Ellie has gravitated towards the if I die, I lose everything approach. And I like that because it makes me have to actually think about my choices and not just click on every single damage note ever. I like that we're going less into the I lose everything and more like, I lose a little bit of time as the penalty in this case, right? Like if I die in an echo, I just go do the echo again and I lose the rewards, but it's just like a little bit of time, right? And then if I die in an Orbis, I lose an hour of time, but now it's going to be like, I lose like maybe 10 to 15 minutes, which I think will incentivize people to push more in terms of damage and just try to just get good <laughs> in that regard. And I, I think that's like the biggest reason why defense is such a pain point is because of how the game is set up in that way. Because in Path of Exile, you don't really have that because you just like, you know, it's you portal, just get baby. enough. I'll put a portal. I mean, it's it's, hardcore, not, it's not quality of life. Easy. It's quantity of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you, you do bring up a good point about um, how we do death penalty stuff. And we, 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 we do really try and have a mechanical death penalty of like whatever whatever situation you're in whatever content you're trying to do like there's some hey you died there's a downside like like don't try not to die next time type thing um but having those be um less about taking stuff away from you that you've that you've previously secured and more about hey you just didn't get the thing that you were trying to do uh and and that's something we've been trying to emphasize more i like it yeah yeah that's definitely a like whenever Perry brings this up and whenever I see other people bring it up, because the people I talk to on a regular basis about this stuff are people who push the absolute extremes in terms of corruption. Well, I stay around like the average that I feel comfortable at, like around 700. This patch was around where I'd stay at because it was like smooth and quick, uh, but still like good enough rewarding wise. And I never felt like I had that problem. I felt like I could do well. Like for instance, recently the, the build that I cycle started with the electrify smite build, it was a dual wielding paladin without hand rain and fill. And I felt just fine. And that's because if I died, it was just an inconvenience. It wasn't like an hour of my time. And but when you push corruption, that becomes way more of a problem. I want to highlight real quick that your smite build was a ranged spellcaster and not a melee character. Mm-hmm. Just well, <clears throat> adding some extra flavor in the conversation. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's just called min-maxing, baby. So there, there's a new pair of boots, and this is just huge meme time. Uh, it says less damage taken while using uh, Erasing Strike. So we put on less damage taken while using Racing Strike, and then we use the Event Horizon, the two-handed maze, that lowers our attack speed. 
and then we just get like the, the slowest, longest erasing strike that one shots everything. And we extend the duration of the less damage taken. See, it's like it's big brain time. I like this. <laughs> I think I think it's a brilliant idea. Right? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hidden, hidden upside and synergy in the reduced attack speed. I can't wait to see it show up in like a YouTube clip of like, what's the most negative attack speed you can get? Love to see it. Uh, before I, I jump into last question, I'm going to take a gimme from Twitch chat. I think this is an uh, easy question to answer, but Mike, why don't you fix snapshotting? Why why is that still a thing? <laughs> um, there are a lot of instances of it that are... I, I think the perceived difficulty of fixing snapshots is... Uh, wildly under what it actually is. <laughs> I feel there's, like there's, I feel like if it were so easy, situa- you wouldn't see every single action RPG suffer the same problems, right? Yeah. Like everyone has the same problem. Surely it must be a complicated problem. And, and we are working on it. It is something that we are working on. It is uh, it, it, like there are we, we've we've gone through a few prototypes of being like, hey, is this a solution? Can we do this? And we like get probably through like, oh, my, no, it doesn't work. Right. Try again. <laughs> and, and so it is it is an important issue that we are interested in, uh, in in having positive change on. And we do. There are certain things. So you'll you'll see um, the Falcon actually has a very interesting anti snapshot system. Uh, that I don't think anyone really realizes is there, which is great um, because it might be a prelude towards it being rolled out in more places. But the the Falcon is a real minion that works the same as any other minion. Um, and it is not snapshotable because it really frequently resummons itself. Uh, every time you dive bomb, it's a new Falcon that shows up at the end. Every time you uh, use aerial assault, it's a new Falcon. Not every time, but almost every time you do these things, it's actually a, like the ability Falcon is not your Falcon. And then when the ability finishes, a new Falcon gets summoned. Did you is actually what's happening. Did you prestige the Falcon? Yeah. Is that what you did? You monster. I can, just, I can imagine there's like a farm of like. <laughs> There's like a farm of people working there creating like uh breeding new falcons. It's like, all right, here's some ammunition. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. All right. I love the implication of this. Um the the last question that I have written down before we just, you know, figure out what else we want to talk about is uh talking about something else in the monolith system. And these are the blessings. The blessings are at a forefront of everyone's mind because 1.1 will be the best patch in the history of the last epoch because of the blessing change which makes me think about the blessings that are on the left side of the monolith. So all the right side blessings, looking at it you know, on your screen, give you player power. And then those three monoliths on the left side give you like percent drop rate of pants or something. Like they're all like very specific affixes, items, types, some items, types, things like that. So are those fulfilling what EHG wants them to do? Do you want to make them more specific? Do you want more options? Or what's, are, are those performing the way that you want them to perform i think they are underperforming a little bit i would say um we really early really early on in the development of last epoch we had a we had a dev dev meeting um what we're talking like pre-kickstarter type early on um where we we got together and we're like let's talk about magic find because we all played a ton of diablo 2 at that time and um we're like like let's like it, it, Magic Find is such a huge part of this about RPGs and how they work and everything. And um, we're like, wh- where are we going to fit Magic Find into the game? And uh, are we going to do it? Like, is it going to be on items? Is it all these things? It was a, it was a very big conversation we had. And we, the, the the TLDR of it that we took away is that we never really want um, Magic Find to directly compete with power. Um, as far as like, here, here's, a, here's an item slot. And in that item slot, you have to pick, do you want power or do you want Magic Find? And we, we just never wanted that choice to have really happen as, as a direct uh, com- comparison. Um, and so we're like, okay, well, if we're going to do any sort of magic find, like it's got to, if, it, if there's going to be any sort of like choice to pick magic find sort of thing, it's got to be somewhere where it's just competing with other types of magic find. Um, and, and this is kind of how we got to where we are now. Um, I think that... Because you are right, there's there's a very clear bias to hey, I'm going to go up the right side of the of the monolith, and I'm going to get all of the things that actually make me more powerful. Um, and I think it I think it mostly has to do with the um, the point that you're approach that you're accessing that at in in your character's journey. Um, so like really like a level ninety five character that 
that is probably looking at, hey, do I want to like get a grand version of this blessing that I have? Um, have like just increase that power a little bit, or do I want like twenty five percent more uniques or something like that? Um, and and I think that distinctions a little bit of that that uh, um, decisions a little bit harder to make. But like while you are um, while you're leveling a character and getting through that the month for the first time, it's a really really easy choice to make of like I, I my character needs to be better, so I gotta go with the right side. And I think it's not really working well overall because of that. But at the same time, it, it is sort of fulfilling the idea of, hey, there's a space where you can customize the gear you're finding. You can influence your loot. You can it's it's a it's another little minor step towards more deterministic loot where you're saying, like, I need to find a shield. So I'm going to get the shield blessing and I'm going to find more shields. And it, and it doesn't that, it doesn't decrease the amount of loot of anything else. It's just like increase shields, but nothing else pays the cost of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go on. And I, th- I think for like from from that perspective, it's really positive and doing a really great job at what it's doing, having it compete with the actual power on the other side of the tree, it's losing. It is, it is losing. And I don't know if that's a really a bad thing necessarily. Um, I'd almost like to see, and this is something we designed the monolith with in mind, I'd almost like to see where the blessing pools are getting shuffled up a little bit. Um, like the, maybe like the monolith, the island order or the, like where the blessings are like, like um, maybe different, timelines becoming different level timelines and shuffling that order a little bit or like i think there's room for a shake up there that would really help especially in franchise players uh be more interested in it i think i like recently in this discussion this matters because now to defeat Aberroth, you do have to kill each harbinger in each monolith and that makes people interact with those other sides uh more in general so i think that helps a lot i've noticed is like it, i'm gonna have to go and do every single uh, boss to uh be able to actually see Aberroth, and by then i will have all of my empowered blessings i will at least have one well yeah i will have at least one in well one non-empowered right because you got to do a 91 yeah. mm-hmm. and then one empowered one of each right and by then then i should like have like have all the magic find stuff and at that point i'm like i already know it exists and if i want better ones i can go and get those i think for me i think the problem with the magic find stuff is i know it's there perry knows there but like how do you know it's there if that makes sense it's very hard to like like because we know that like all the stat based blessings are on the right side because that's where everyone goes and it's where everyone tells you to go but like if i were to ask like a random person in twitch chat or like random people on like reddit forum or just someone who doesn't even interact at all with content they just play the game and i ask them it's like hey uh did you know that there is a blessing that like increases your scepter drop rate they'd be like what and i think that's like the problem i think if people knew that they existed they would be more willing to go get it I think that's like part of the problem for me. Yeah, so maybe in the uh, the game guide, I'd be a good place for it. Yeah, like a list of all the blessings. So it's not just a, you know an external third party website. Could be like listed right there. Could be good. Um, mm-hmm. We were brainstorming this we, we ahead have, of time. There are more. There are more things coming to the game guide in one point one. It is expanding. We are constantly adding more stuff. Game guide bigger, better, always. Love it. Just press G. Um, yep. We were talking about like. Things that you can do with the left side blessings, you can make it like, you know, increase drop rate of minion affixes or minion items. You do drop rate of, you know, spellcaster items. Like try to customize it more that way. I don't know. It was a fun conversation where we were like brainstorming what you could do with the left side. I just use the left side to make my, you know, frostbite gloves. I like the left side in a way where like it has like I like how the left side for the most part other than like one specific boss it has all the very powerful uniques like i'm talking to like the the chase items i like the idea of having the non-stat blessing ones having the powerful uniques and the the one on the right side maybe not powerful but build enabling or whatever right so like for instance on the left side you get like frostbite shackles which just got nerfed by the way it's still very strong uh right and that's like something a lot of people want and then you go to the right side and then you get like a boulder's wrath which is powerful in its own right but i don't need it and i like the fact that i am forced 
because uh, in merchant guild i do need to go farm stuff for currency right i'm like i'm always thinking like which boss do i farm for currency which which item people are looking for and i think that will get better over time as uniques from those bosses get more and more usage i'm curious like, which which boss are you making fun of for the for the left side which one's oh, bad I in was, your opinion uh i was making fun of uh the the void heart in one because like other than the shield the other two are kind of like you know like, I, 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 I like it's, it's funny like I, I have the same opinion but i'm, I'm kind of making fun of argentus oh uh, argentus argentus is different because like he has thrown and like thrown in like wings of argentus which like just got buffed by the yeah, way but, but the shield from the from the void hearten the shield is so it's got so much block chance on it i love that thing perry i i tell you right now there's hundreds and thousands of people who play le that literally don't care about their defenses oh, the shield! <laughs> uh, wings of and- argentus listen i was looking at a lot of uh warpath builds mm-hmm. i i like making fun of warpath but i almost league started warpath for 1.1 and like wings of argentus they they did buff you know the the lp level which i think is merited because like that thing fell off a cliff so now that it's easier to get lp on you know maybe it does find its way into a build maybe even a non-warpath build they just buff dancing yeah. strikes too it didn't. It didn't get a huge drop to its LPL, did it? It was 115 it's and now it's 90, right? 115 to 90, which 90, is yeah. now you actually get to see it instead yeah. of not. <laughs> instead of just like, I'm never gonna get it. It's like you, I might, I might get a one. Yeah, you'll, you'll see. You'll see ones. You you the the rate that you were seeing one like one LP at before is still higher than the rate you'll see two LP at now. Um. Sure. But okay. like you'll see one LP way more now than you did before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. And I yep. to add to this point as well, something I noticed, I didn't notice this until I went to look at the LE planner, but I realized that all of these new uniques we're getting, a lot of them are dropped by specific harbingers in specific mono. That's cool. And yep. that's gonna that's gonna add even more to my discussion on like the the merchant skill of being able to like, you know, like farm for good items for to sell. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, a lot of the, uh, that's something that that did drive a lot of like, why we got so many uniques is that we had a lot of bosses that needed unique drops. That's a good observation. No, I like it. It's cool. Um, I've got I've got one throwaway question at the end. It's a and not what I could well could call a good question, but you know I'll ask it anyways. The question is uh, arena of champions. Why uh, do I hate it? <laughs> why it takes so long? Because you're an I told you it was a bad question. Swat. Pardon? What did you say? <laughs> what, what, what did you say about that? I, I don't know. I don't know what you heard. I didn't say anything. What are oh. you talking about? What, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't hear oh anything God. either. I have to go get back and clip my own podcast. All right. So Arena of Champions, it, it takes a long time. You just kind of wait around for it. And then uh, you're, you're one in three to get the boss that you want. And then even then, that boss might not drop. Uh, even at tier four, might not drop their unique item. Like there's so much RNG that goes into it, and well, you know, you go it's, it's an arena. And they drop it easier, Perry. Oh, good. Yeah, I think. Thank goodness. It's it, it has it, it's been it's been for I think it forgot. I was gonna say it's been forgotten, but I don't think it's been forgotten. It's been, uh, it's been Side pushed one? aside a little bit. I think it's not a super popular right. game mode. Um, but yeah, I I do think there's there's I think there's a lot of room for um improvements to how that the, how the arena works in general. Um, and how the arena of champ- the champions as well. Um, they are, I think, a really, really interesting look into um, how specifically the uh, nemesis and the exiled mages uh, design started. They're like sort of a proto version, the bosses, anyways, of of those characters, um, of those like bosses that are showing up now. And um, I would really like to see. There, there's there's been a few times where we're like. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna update the uh, the way we do the arena, and um, you know, like the, the the changes that we've prepped for it. We're like, okay, this is great. Yeah, we're gonna do this. Is it more important than this other thing? And this comes back to that prioritization stuff we we're talking about earlier, where we're like, there's there's just there's new content that is going to have a bigger impact, and it's been focused on uh, over top of improvements to the arena of champions. Mm-hmm. But I do agree that there is a lot of room for improvements there. Um, Playability wise, I think is the most important thing. Uh, Dread, having, I know... having a next wave button is is 
I want I want them to spawn faster. Just like give me yeah. give me some more challenge. Let me let me spam that button and just fill the entire arena with profane flushes. Let me just do it. Listen, I love that idea. I I feel like people look at me weird every time I say this, but like I want something that I can opt into where there's you know twenty um diamond matrons or twenty profane flushes like that. That should be codified somewhere. I want that experience and I want to opt into it. Let let us let us let us get the servers uh, a little more a little more strong, a little more stable, <laughs> a little more efficient. Um, we are at the end of the scripted questions, the questions that we planned ahead of time. If there are people in chat who have something that they have in their minds, a question that we can ask to uh, to Mike here while we have him graciously uh, joining us on this platform, make sure you at eg photon. Dread, I can't alt tab onto Discord if there is something going I on. I got it. Yeah, I got you. Go ahead. I got you. If there are well, questions. Okay. Yes. So this is a huge question that a lot of people always ask. It's a very contentious topic around Last Epoch right now that I see everywhere. It's, I play mostly offline. Can I have my MTX offline, please? Maybe. Uh, right now, no. Um, it's not... <laughs> Nothing, nothing set in stone, but I can't really give you, I can't give you anything other than it, right for at least for right now, it's still locked in online mode. Um, we are very aware that this is a major problem for people who play in offline mode, and and it's it's something that we see a lot in the feedback. We are not deaf to it, um, it and and we're. I I really hope I have better news for you next time the question gets asked. But right for right now, one point one offline mode will not have access to MTX. Is the 1.1 MTX good? Be honest with me. I, 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 yes. Yes. Thank <laughs> God. I'm, I'm, gonna I'm excited. I'm going to buy it either way, so I hope it's good. <laughs> all right. What's the next one, Dread? The next one. All right. All I see is just a, it's just a dash, and it's buff singularity, please. <laughs> I take it. I, for me, I think a cool way to buff singularity, in my opinion, is... Make keep it the way it is, but instead of giving the more damage just a blanket number, making it so like for every five attributes or something that you have, you get like one percent more damage with non crits. I think that would be a much more interesting. Oh, idea. so instead of just like it's getting the more work. multi, it gives you an avenue to build into it. Yeah, sure, sure. That would be fun. But let's get to the next one here. So uh, I'm curious about what the role slash design goals around forged weapons are like what what were you guys trying to achieve with them that's the next one yeah so, so forge guard the like the core underlying theming of forge guard itself is really it's really focused around equipment gear it's in the highlighting equipment and gear and really putting uh the the, the power in your in your equipment and like amplifying and and putting putting your equipment under a microscope of like hey let's maybe microsoft's a bad word a bit magnifying glass and like shining a light on how great your gear is that's sort of the the forge guards mo so to speak and uh i i think that there's i think the most personally the most disappointing part about forge weapons is its inability to inherit really um mechanically interesting things um, and I think, so I think right now people see it as, uh, or at least there, there's this, there's this arc, that, this journey people go on when they first see forge weapons and they think, oh my God, I got a copy of my weapon that exists in the world and it's going to do everything my weapon does. That's amazing. It's going to volcanic, it's going to shoot out firebolts. Yeah. Yeah. And then they very quickly realize, oh, it doesn't work with that mod or any other of the like really build altering interesting mods that are there. It's just, it's just the stats. It's just the core stats. We actually um, have someone uh, in my Discord, Rook, his name is. He uh, he keeps a list of everything that works and doesn't work with Manifest Armor right now. It's very funny. That's so sad. Oh, it's, it, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so many of those effects. It's and it's it's really just a complexity uh, a complexity issue of getting those effects to work on anything other than the than the player character is so. It's a lot, and uh, each one of them has to be adapted individually. And being in a situation where, because right right now it's you can almost look at it and you can tell pretty quickly if it's going to work or not. Once like I'm sure the two of you looking at a, at a no no weapon, you uh, Afghan no weapon, you'll be like that's going to work. Oh, that's not going to work. You'll be able, you'll be, I bet you can get like 95 percent of those at a glance now because you, you've been doing this for a while. Um, and 
if we started adapting really specific individual pieces of that, like we're like, okay, this weapon, we're going to make it start working now. I think when we get into the point where you can't tell by looking at it, if you're experienced, I think that's problematic. And we've kind of got to do a lot of it, like a big chunk all at once. Uh, and that would take forever. It's a gigantic investment. And so I, th- I think we've really got to find a way to do it efficiently and start and start doing that if we can. Um, it throws so much into the uh, like the whole balance of the entire ability. It throws in the wood chipper of what it can do and what it would become. What your question is about its place in, in the world of, of the set of the forge garden, how it's building all that sort of stuff. So I think the I think mostly what we want to see out of forged weapons um, and other summons in the in the forge art arsenal. So like manifest armor and also your ring of shields and things like that is that um, it is it's they're, they're support characters. They're not the they're not the show. You're still the show. And um, they're you're 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 using them to like increase your DPS, get a little bit more juice out of your gear. And it's more of an extension of yourself than it is a like a, an army that you're summoning to go fight for you. And I think that's something that people are kind of hoping it is. And it doesn't really work fantastic as that. Um, so either either we need to do something to manage the, those expectations better, either or we need to um, like bring up, make it so it's possible to do that, or or I don't know what we need to do exactly. But there's 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 some options in there, and I do think that it sits in kind of a weird valley right now. Um, but it is something that we are we are working on improving. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh, someone just posted it in chat, and that's what I was thinking as well. I think the the same problem that you're having with the forge weapon stuff is the same problem uh, GGG has whenever they add in a new mob in the game and it's specterable. They're like, Oh my God, we got to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. it's the same problem. Yeah. All right. The next question here. How is, many, how many more of these do you have? Just like a lot. We have plenty. So you're just gonna have to cut me off when we're done. I'll cut you off uh, at some point. Could there be an option to convert an online character to offline realm? That I would actually like that. Currently, we have no plans to implement this. That's all I got for you. I'm sorry. It's a fast question. Nope, that's yep. okay. Oh boy, you guys answered this one last time. It didn't go as well. Have there been made appropriate preparations regarding the servers? I mean, it's there's there's a there's a huge. Huge team of people. Yes or no? Is... Yes or no? <laughs> Hit me with it. I, I don't know. I can't answer it like <laughs> accurately until until it's done, right? Like we'll find out, right? Also, also, last time I think Judd did that. Remember when in, in the interview? I think I can't remember exactly, but he said like, "Oh yeah, yeah, the servers are fine." And tried, then, like, yeah. I mean, that's, that's I mean, like we've, failing we've run success. so many tests. We've updated the entire the way the way we communicate information across the network. That's completely changed. Um, the the like the servers compared to like 1.0 launch to 1.1 launch like those two days like it's different different servers uh di- a different matchmaking system a different uh a way that you communicate between client and server like the, the whole back end like like the net code is just like completely rewritten um like there's so many changes we've made to improve stability improve the uh, performance improve the uh quantity that it can handle all, all these things it's just like multiplayer uh, performance and uh, I know you guys are probably sick of me hearing me say these lines, but multiplayer performance and and the user experience that goes with that and all this it's it's a, it's our number one priority and it continues to be something that we we put a ton of time and energy into. It's not something that we've been like, hey, it's good enough, we're done. No, it's it can be better. It can be better, and we are making it better. And it's I think people who have been playing since uh, like point nine two and and things like that can hopefully attest that the multiplayer functionality and performance has improved dramatically since then. Um, and, and it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. All right. Next question, by the way, you can talk as much as you want, Mike. I like listening to your voice. <laughs> what is Mike's favorite build in 1.1? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, <sighs> is it spark charges, Raptor no. disintegrate? So I love two-handed rogue. It's my favorite thing to try and make uh, work. Oh Black no! Black blade of chaos. Black blade of chaos. No, no, it's worse than that. Should we tell him? Oh. Oh. Okay. I <laughs> should tell him. All right. So the other day, this was mentioned to me. Uh, a little, little, little fairy got in my ear and, and ruined, ruined your day. day. Yep. 
So apparently one of the best ways of using the new hammer the, is, the big uh, two-handed melee, slow mm-hmm. yourself down, giga bonk, erasing strike. Yeah. So you can use that with shadow daggers and just put a smoke bomb and an umbral blade down. And then you don't have to deal with the downsides because you're a rogue <laughs> and you're going to have like over 200% movement speed. So you have a hundred percent now. It turns out the hammer is the best for shadow daggers for damage. Output. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Uncle maybe. Blade Shadow Dagger, it literally just got nerfed. Like, maybe it's not mm-hmm. the best. But I'm yeah. already disappointed that it might be. Speaking of two-handed rogues, there you go, Mike. Two-handed sword rogue. It's going to be a oh, sword. But sorry, my bad. Uh, the new sword, sword, the uh, the BBC, <clears throat> looks <laughs> awesome. It looks so good. I did not good. Good. that was the acronym at all. I am, oh, I am what an anime sword. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right? going to play that. That's going to be my second build already. The Raptors are really excited about too. I think I think this. I I think I'm going to start with the Raptors. I was just playing the, the the like Raptor on stream, so like I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not. But we'll see. I haven't played. I haven't played an acolyte on stream in quite a while. I think Zombies was the last acolyte build I played on stream. Um, so I might go back to acolyte. We'll see. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh... I want one or two more questions here. Yeah, okay. If we're going to do that, I'm going to choose ones that I like, if that's okay. <clears throat> I like this one. With the buffs to minion health in 1.1, can we expect more changes to minion survivability in the future? Yes. It's. Uh, I mean, we're always changing all sorts of stuff, so yes. It's a pretty, it's a pretty broad question. Um, if, if the underlying question is, are you going to buff my minion survivability again next patch? Maybe. Uh, I but- think the question for me is when it comes to temporary minions, like the Forge we- weapons, when I'm playing like the Warpath Forge weapons build and I'm spinning and I have to stop and then spin again and all that, I'm not making as many Forge weapons, right? And yeah. the problem becomes if one of them dies to get my max amount of minions, right? Like uh, it takes forever. Yeah. and. It sucks summoning your entire cadre of minions every single time it dies to like a big AOE attack. I think that's more like what this uh, question is asking because that's how I feel. Yeah, I think the flow that that you like the flow breaks that happen with with having to resummon minions sl- slowly is pro- is is like that's something we really want to avoid. Um, so keep keeping that keeping your minion train rolling is good. <sighs> It, it's it's a fine line because there's a point where hey, if minions are just immortal, like and all you have to do is just like keep yourself alive and keep yourself safe, and the minions will eventually get it done. Doesn't like they're doing three damage a hit. I don't care, and like they won't die. And as long as I can survive, I can do anything. That is a really boring gameplay situation to be in. Like, like okay, I'm gonna do this boss fight in ten hours. Great, because eventually they will kill it eventually that's not really a lot of fun so there's there, there is a point where there is such thing as too much minion defenses i think do we see like not now that we have the auto uh sacrifice relic that acolyte has access to should we have like more support for like the detonate forge weapon stuff that's in the forge guard skill tree should we blow up our locusts i want to i want to blow up more minions that when i look at a minion i want to blow it up that's how i feel about minions so generally what we say is then you should be playing Acolyte. <laughs> Damn. Uh, but, you know, people, like, you know, we, we like to have these things bleed in places and um, you'll, you'll see those things on items typically. All right. For the last question, I'm going to read a very biased one and I love it because of how biased it is. Essentially, it's saying like, why did you nerf my build? I own this one. Why were the outlier builds of 1.1 nerfed in multiple ways and with general nerfs instead of only removing the specific interactions like with gel cores and only nerfing specific problems like you did with making Frostclaw more mana hungry? Ooh. I mean, every single one of them is done on a case by case basis. Um, so there's usually what it is is we'll like we'll start with something really specific, and then someone will someone will be like, okay, well I just made this one tiny little tweak to my build, and it's exactly the same thing. And then we're like, all right, let's tweak that one little thing as well, and then it's okay, well it's I still can do the exact same thing, and so we have like the the change gets broader and broader and broader, um, and then we end up with with a more broad change <laughs> i think that's what happens sometimes so we try and keep them as specific and surgical as we can when there is something that's a dramatic outlier 
Um, but sometimes there's another dramatic outlier lurking just right beneath the sea surface. And, you know, you got to go a little broader still. I think this specific one was just talking about the ward nerfs in general. <laughs> no, I want my ward. All right. I think that's going to. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was just going to say the, the ward thing is there's so like it was so extreme and the potential for it to be so extreme uh, was was just was. We we were taking off this the top end of it specifically because we don't want people who are playing those lower power builds to struggle. Um, yeah. Is is anyone getting thirty thousand ward in patch one point one? Yeah, I think someone will do it. You think someone's gonna get thirty thousand? Thirty thirty thousand is gonna be a huge number. Well, given the, the new question situation. is, are they gonna get it and then lose it instantly? That's yeah. that's the better question, actually. <laughs> yes, they'll get it, lose it instantly. I think someone will be like, I've, I got a screenshot. It was there for a frame. <laughs> <laughs> it's like min maxing so that Pee Wee Ninja thinks that you have more ward. Yeah, right. Yeah, all right. So we are we're about an hour and forty five, about like an hour and forty minutes into the podcast. I want to thank you so much, Mike, for spending your time this afternoon before the uh before the one point one patch chatting with us on the Rat City Radio podcast. Dread, thank you for being here. Appreciate your company, buddy. And for those of you who are watching live on Twitch.tv, thank you for hanging out as well. Thank you for submitting questions for the second half of the uh, podcast here. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube and Spotify, let us know where you're watching it. We'll make sure that your viewing experience, listening experience is as optimal as possible. So until tomorrow, when I'm playing Serpent Strike, Mm -hmm. and Dread's playing a Shaman, and Mike's playing Raptors, probably? Yeah. Raptors, probably. All right, lock it in. I'll see you next time, Chad. Have a good one. That was great. Thanks for having me. I really had a fun. Tons of fun.